We've covered a lot of epic encounter boxes here at the Gallant Goblin, and I always like to mention that they're a great thing to take to a meetup to introduce new people to D&D. And I realize that I haven't really done that yet. I remember the last few times I ran some intro games were at a Houston Gamers meetup and at PAX South a few years before COVID hit. And I didn't have any epic encounter boxes at the time, so I found a good intro module and now I can't find it or remember what it was called to give the creator credit, so if you recognize this, let me know. But the party had to infiltrate a lavish party to try to steal an object from the mansion. And it was a great mix of social encounters and combat with a lot of room to find creative solutions. And I ran it like half a dozen times for, uh, and no two groups like, approached it in the same way. So I thought that was fantastic. I brought some generic minis and some pre-gen character sheets and I drew up the map on some graph paper. And then I just showed up early at whatever event it was and I grabbed a table and I plopped down a little sign that said like, come and learn D&D. And I made a lot of new friends and I brought many of them into the hobby. And now these boxes from Steamforge games make a lot of that easier to do. And let's be honest, the cool maps and the nicely designed monster minis are probably going to make a bigger impression on new folks than my Sharpie scribbles on some graph paper. But I'm wondering if you've tried anything like that, with an Epic Encounters box or with something else. If so, let me know in the comment section down below. Now today we are looking at the newest minion box, Hive of the Ghoulkin, featuring some creepy undead. And many thanks to Steamforge for sending it to us to review. But before we jump in, I am so happy to say that the newest Kickstarter is live now for Humblewood by Hitpoint Press. Humblewood is such a fantastic 5e campaign setting, and the adventures have been excellently designed to be complex, but fitting for the fairy tale tone of the setting. Humblewood Tales is a companion book to the original, featuring expanded lore around the mystical tree city of Alderheart. Gather your party and embark on five new Humblewood Wood adventures for levels three to eight, where you'll encounter pirate mercenaries, face off against a slime king, take on an amaranthine kren in a nightmarish dreamscape, and so much more. With more than 200 pages of new content that's fully compatible with all your 5e games, including pre-made characters and a full bestiary, myriads of new magical items, and more, there is plenty of thrills to be had for both new and seasoned Humblewood adventurers. Humblewood Tales is available as a book, a box set, and a Kickstarter exclusive collector's edition. Check it out at the link in the corner of your screen or in the doohickey down below before it is too late. Now, opening our Epic Encounters box, we have our usual epic goodness. In this case, we get a little sales pamphlet about other Epic Encounter boxes, the folded up double-sided map, our rules and adventure book, and 15 ghoulish minis. Now, this adventure is rather more gruesome than some of the prior ones, so be aware if you're a little bit squeamish. So let's just start with the minis, shall we? Here we have our Ghoulkin Reaver. In our adventure here, the ghoul's origin is shrouded in mystery, though at least one ancient grimoire suggests that they were spawned by a so-called blood sire for some nefarious purpose. The Reavers here use the same CR1 stat block as the ghoul from the basic rules, but elves are no longer immune to the paralyzation from its claw attacks. You see, in D&D lore, ghouls actually trace our lineage back to the elves. Their origins for this adventure are a little bit different. We get eight total reaver minis, which is quite a lot for a single sculpt, and these are the only medium-sized creatures in this set. The Ghoulkin Stalkers are a bit of an offshoot of the Reavers, just able to attack twice with their claws and lacking a bite attack. But two strikes with the claws means two opportunities to paralyze. The Reavers and the Stalkers are animalistic creatures who will strike out mindlessly at whatever warm-blooded creature is nearby. The set comes with two CR1 Stalkers. Their stat block lists them as mediums, though I assure you they are on large size bases here. Next up the food chain, we have a Hive Warden Ghoulkin riding a so-called Corpse Chewer. We get separate stat blocks for each enemy. Let's start with the Hive Warden, who has both a Bite and a Spear attack, but no ability to paralyze. It does do more damage if it's mounted and moving, and it can knock foes prone. The Corpse Chewer, of course, looks similar to a Carrion Crawler and uses a Carrion Crawler stat block with fewer hit points and a CR of only one. And it's another creature that does have the ability to paralyze foes, so watch out. 
Our next big baddie is the Ghoul Ken Bulwark. This CR5 undead monstrosity can attack three times a turn, either with its bite, its paralyzing claw attack, or with its rain spit acid attack. If you're keeping score at home, this is the first monster to really have a ranged attack. So if the party can find a way to keep these raging undead foes at bay, they're gonna have a much easier time of it. Oh, the Bulwark also has the troll-like ability to regenerate, healing from damage. Finally, we had the Blood Sire itself, a CR8 undead ghoulkin with magic resistance, the familiar paralyzing claw attack, a powerful bite, an aura of despair that can frighten foes, and the ability to redirect damage to any other ghoulkin nearby. His stat block is lacking in ranged attacks, but the adventure book features a fun rolling table that you can use to determine what happens when he hurls random flasks from his workstation at any pesky heroes who happen to invade his laboratory. And of course, all these ghouls have a number of resistances and immunities too. Here's a full set together, a bunch of ghoulish undead plague bringers to mess up your adventuring party's day. The 33-page adventure book that comes with the set will be familiar to Epic Encounters fans. This set can easily be used for a standalone one-shot, but they do give you enough guidance in the book to help you tie it in to your ongoing campaigns. You get background lore on the ghoulkin and a number of rumors which the players can learn about. And it's up to you to decide which ones are true for your story. Is the ghoulkin blood sire the very first ghoul of this particular branch of undead? dead? When the ghoulkin consume the dead, do they become privy to the secrets the dead knew in life? Do the ghoulkin have a hive mind that makes taking them by surprise nearly impossible? It's up to you. There are also six story hooks to help you connect it to your ongoing adventures. Maybe the graveyards of the town you're visiting are being emptied. Maybe you're tasked with uncovering a bit of knowledge that the ghouls have consumed. Perhaps miners deep underground are going missing. The hooks are varied enough that you should be able to find ones that will connect to whatever story you're telling in your campaign. The book also contains extensive information about the ghouls' lair, their tactics, and the ways that you can make the adventure more cinematic, both with your descriptions and with the gameplay mechanics. And of course, we also have the information about the actual hive of the ghoulkin. As always, the box comes with a full-color, double-sided map on silken paper. On the first side, we have 15 by 20 inches of playable space representing the crypt, which the players enter from a hole in the ceiling. The crypt here is one large room with a few notable features. In the center of the room are the butchery slabs. It seems the corpses aren't just chewed on like a protein bar on the bottom of my satchel. No different Different ghouls like different parts of the body, so the bodies are dismembered and, well, sorted? The slabs will require some constitution saves, and if this were something like Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green, I'd probably also call for a sanity check. The pit in the corner of the room is a maggot farm, used to dispose of the parts of the body that even the ghouls don't want to eat. Apparently that's the feet. The smarter ghouls will attempt to push the enemies into the maggot hives. And finally, those green glowy bits are pools of acid that the bulwarks had to discharge from their system. One interesting new thing in this set is that there are two locations mentioned in the book that don't appear on the maps. The Corpse Chewer Corral, where they raise their carrion crawlers, I mean their corpse chewers, and let them lay their eggs, and then the tunnels that eventually lead to the Blood Sire's laboratory. So these are locations that you'll either have to create or find maps for yourself, as combat is pretty inevitable in both locations. Eventually, they will arrive at the Blood Sire's lair, seen here on the opposite side of the map. You see the Blood Sire crafts his ghoulkin here using a combination of his own flesh, a corpse, strange alchemical regents, necromantic magic, and his own mad genius. And it is here that the Blood Sire remains, perfecting his trade, sending out his ghoulkin to be his eyes and hands and ears in the outside world. The lab here contains numerous foul but potentially useful concoctions to be used by or against the heroes, and the book gives you plenty of ideas and options for making the battle here one that'll be chaotic, cinematic, and hopefully unforgettable. So let's talk about the hive of the ghoulkin, because it is mixing up the Epic Encounters formula a little bit. Now in the past, we've typically gotten 20 minis in a set with about seven to nine unique sculpts. This set only has five unique sculpts and 15 minis total, but this set has larger minis than usual, 
Four of the sculpts and seven of the 15 minis are large in size, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Now, this isn't a new trend because the next minion box will be Island of the Crab Archon, which features 21 minis with, with seven unique sculpts. So between this set and the last one, Arena of the Undead Horde, we have quite a dip into the horror genre. And I think you could combine this set with that last pair to make yourself an interesting little undead horror mini campaign. And if you're not a fan of the undead or these more scary, grotesque adventures, the next underwater pair of Epic Encounter boxes may be more up your alley. The only real concern I have with this set is that it features a lot of creatures who can paralyze. And paralyze is one of those conditions that sucks for a player because it basically means that you're taken out of the game for some period of time. It's just not fun. So I would perhaps let your characters find out during their preparations that Ghoulkin are known for paralyzation and allow them to plan out how they can handle that, most likely by using lesser restoration in some form or another. I use conditions like stun and paralyze very sparingly because I never want to remove the players from my game. Otherwise, this is another really fun and creative set from Steamforge Games that offers a unique adventure and some fun, if grotesque minis that you should be able to reuse in the future for other stories using the stat box they provide for you. Epic Encounters Hive of the Ghoul Kin is available now for between 45 and 55 bucks. Of course, this isn't the end of the story because after the players defeat the Blood Sire, the ground beneath them starts to rumble. And we'll tell you more about that when we review the accompanying boss box, Barrow of the Corpse Crawler, very soon. Also, if you missed a Kickstarter for Epic Encounters Local Legends, which gives you 10 fully realized taverns to add to your regular campaigns in the high quality Epic Encounter style, you can still submit late pledges using the link in the corner of your screen or in the doohickey down below. To learn more about it, you can check out our preview video, which is now up in the corner of the screen. And don't forget to check out the Humblewood Tales Kickstarter using our links. You don't want to miss out on that one. Now, I'm gearing up to go out of town for a week to see my mom back in Georgia. It'll be my first time seeing her in over a year. So we are trying to quickly make quite a lot of videos here to tide you over while I'm away. Hopefully you're enjoying them. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming out right now, including Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. Be sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. You can come chat with us on Discord, pick yourself up some of our adorable Cobalt plushies at cobaltplush.com, and come visit us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>